So you want to divorce the narcissist. Why? Isn't it fun? The ups and downs, the roller coaster, the unfulfilled promises, the abuse, the won't you miss it? Well, probably not. Okay. Richard Grannon, the one and only Spartan life coach, and myself, Sam Bucknin, the author of Malignant Self Love, Narcissism Revisited, you remember? We are going to be at the Burbeck Institute on the 4th of November. Don't ask me why. And we are going to be there from 12 o'clock until 6 in the evening, because we have nothing better to do. If you care to join us, we are going to deliver a four-hour seminar on divorcing the narcissist or psychopath. Now, seriously, divorce is anyhow a fraught, difficult, onerous, arduous process, and many other adjectives. It's emotionally harrowing, it's financially devastating, it has effects and impacts on near and dear, including your children, if you have any. So, as it is, it is a traumatic thing to go through. Actually, trauma studies have shown that divorce is the most traumatic event in a person's life. But when you are divorcing a narcissist or a psychopath, this whole thing is amplified a hundred times over. And it's amplified, I think, for two reasons. First of all, narcissists and psychopaths have such a unique psychology such inexplicable, incomprehensible psychodynamics that it feels like you're divorcing an alien. You're divorcing someone who is not, shall we say, fully human. And that is a very disconcerting, sometimes frightening experience, because you can't predict, you can't tell what would be the next step. Where is it all leading? And how is it all going to end? So this is my role in the seminar. I'm going to give you insight into how the narcissist and the psychopath views the divorce process, because they don't look at it the way you look at it. They don't see it the same way. Their mind interprets everything in such a, a way that you have no access to. Narcissists and psychopaths have numerous cognitive deficits and cognitive biases. In other words, they're not thinking straight. And they have emotional hang-ups. And they have problems processing certain types of emotions, such as fear, guilt, shame, rage, anger. So, it's very important to understand what's going on in the mind of your opposite number, in the mind of the person you're divorcing. And while you can make safe, safe assumptions about normal, healthy people, uh, you can't make any assumptions, safe or not, about narcissists and psychopaths before you have delved into their mind, before you took the scuba deep diving, uh, which I'm going to provide you with. So I'm going to tell you exactly what your narcissist and psychopath is thinking of in each and every step of this very complicated, winding way. Not exactly the yellow brick road. And so both Richard and I are going to discuss how to cope with your emotional uh, reactions to the narcissist's emotional reactions. We're going to tell you how to defeat the narcissist in court. Um, it's very easy to do, by the way. You need to train your attorney, educate your attorney on how to do it. But once you've learned the basic tactics and techniques, you can defeat the narcissist in court. Narcissist is his own worst enemy on the stand and in front of a judge, evaluator, whoever. Uh, we will discuss issues of custody and children. What about visitation rights? What about, uh, should, should they be limited or restricted or, or given at all? Uh, what if the narcissist sues for custody? What te techniques and tactics is going to use to look, make it look bad? How the system perniciously and insidiously actually collaborates with the narcissist against you 
Because the narcissist is great at charming people, great at projecting an image of a great father or a wonderful husband. You know, narcissist is going to pathologize you, going to make you look uh, mentally ill. And how to work with the system, uh, how to leverage the system. So we're going to um, tell you what to expect in the divorce process and how to defend yourself against the narcissist. But divorce is only the first stage. What happens after the divorce? After the divorce, I mean, you, you can divorce but the narcissist, but you can never get him out of your life, or very rarely. So there's a lot of gaslighting, ambient abuse, abuse by proxy. Narcissist uses other people to abuse you. Smear campaigns, I mean, you name it. And we're going to tell you how to, how to handle yourself and your social milieu and your environment, how to construct support networks and how to use these support networks to counter the narcissist's relentless and incessant attacks. And a small percentage of narcissists also become stalkers, and a small percentage of these stalkers, the paranoid stalkers, are very dangerous. So how to protect yourself, literally. And then there is emotional impact. There is emotional impact because, because during the divorce process, usually you will not be able to obtain closure. Many of the things you thought you knew about your marriage, about your spouse, are utterly exposed as utterly wrong. The shock is, 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 is huge, it's indescribable. The shock of discovering the truth about your life. What has really happened as opposed to the shared psychosis that you, that you, had, you had with your, with your husband. And I'm saying husband because the majority of narcissists are male. But of course, the shared psychosis you shared with your wife, if you are the rare male in the audience. So it is this exiting the cult, because what you've had was a cult. It is this debriefing, deprogramming, um, that has to be self-administered. Um, you can obviously get help from someone like Richard, who has developed amazing techniques of coping and healing. But ultimately, the bulk of the work you have to do yourself. And you are all alone, and you are terrified, and you are, you are penniless, and there's children, and there's demands from society. And very often you're misunderstood. And, and your, your predicament is underestimated, and mocked, and poo-pooed. And so we're gonna, we're gonna describe all this, and we're gonna try to lend you a helping hand. And then we're going to take a break. And the second part is a dialogue between me and Richard. Um, and I hope between Richard and me, because the interviews, the recorded interviews, I was talking 90% of the time, and Richard has many fascinating things to say. He's an absolutely brilliant, intelligent, super intelligent, I would say, interlocutor. He's underestimating himself. He's self-effacing and self-deprecating. But I really um, would try to control my, my impulses and let him speak uh, as well, because he has uh, brilliant insights and unusual ways of looking at things. So we're going to have this public dialogue in front of a live audience, you, uh, for two hours. And if it's successful, we're going to have a series of live dialogues all over the United Kingdom and maybe elsewhere. Um, because I think both of us have a lot to say. It doesn't necessarily mean that we are right, but at least will provoke you to think and to react uh, between you and yourself and with others. We want to we want to engender, we want to foster a conversation. So this is it. These are the two parts. You can buy tickets to the first part and ticket a ticket to the first part or a ticket to the second part, and you can buy a, buy a combined ticket. Hurry up and buy your ticket before the 15th of October because it's a very sizable discount, like 30 or 40 percent. After the 15th of October, the prices are much higher, and there's no reason for that, because you know you're coming. So, you know, why wait? Jump on the bandwagon. Join us, Richard Grennan, Spartan Life Coach, and Sam Dachnin, the author of Malignant self Love Narcissism Revisited. Join us for an unforgivable day, the 4th of November, a day of infamy to be remembered. Like, in the future, people will ask you, where have you been? when Richard and Sam held their first live dialogue. And you will remember. See you soon.